My name is Joy Moros and I'm also on this committee and it's been my pleasure to have email conversation with our speaker Sonia Clark. I don't know her but I'm sure we'll get to know her. She is the Assistive Technology Specialist with North Carolina Assistive Technology Program and she's been doing this for 11 years and has collaborated with this program for over 17 years. She provides an overview of their services, including demonstrated high technology and low technology devices. And she's brought some of them with her, and I'm sure we'll see a lot of them on her um, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, she was previously employed with North Carolina's Protection and Advocacy Agency, the Governor's Advocacy Council for Persons with Disabilities, in 2000 and Disability Rights North Carolina in 2007 as the Assistive Technology Advocate. She holds a BA in Sociology from Fayetteville State University and a Master's of Social Work from the University of Southern California. She pre recently participated in a 14-month comprehensive competency-based accredited professional development program in Certified Public Manager Program. I don't know what that means. And <laughs> became a Certified Public Manager in 2022, and maybe she can tell us what that is. Um, she has one son and two beautiful grandchildren. So we thank you so much for agreeing to do this for us. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good. Evening. Good. My name is Sonia, as, as she stated, and we're going to have a little fun tonight. I'm going to start out by talking a little bit about um, who we are and what we do, and I'm going to ask questions. I want you to ask questions. It's very interactive, okay? Um, I don't like to be bored, so I don't want to be boring, okay? So I'm going to also have, we got some, some fun things to show you as well as some videos that kind of put some things in perspective as well, okay? Now, as I'm talking, don't hesitate to stop me at any time for a couple of reasons. One, you just want to ask a question or you want clarification or something. That's fine. Two, I talk fast. Although I'm from Saxon County, Clinton, North Carolina, that's home, born and bred, that is where I'm from, um, I talk fast. So do not hesitate to say, look, little lady, let me just slow down just a little bit, okay? Um, so some of the things that we'll talk about today are mostly things that will assist people with um, vision loss or hearing loss or dexterity issues or because of a stroke or Parkinson's disease, you're having some issues with the fine motor skills. So that's pretty much what I do most of my talk around, okay? Um, and we're gonna also get a little bit into smart homes. So now, as I get started, let me turn my thing here. My first question for you is, have you heard of us before? Have you heard of the North Carolina Assistive Technology Program. I'm seeing people shake their head no. I see two people sh giving me a hand. Wonderful, I hear to see two people. Now the two people who said you've heard of us before, oh three. Can I get a fourth one? <laughs> For those of you who, who, who raised your hands, um, have you used us before? Yay, okay. But it sounds like I'm in the right room tonight. I'm definitely in the right room. So we're gonna, before you leave out of here today, I'm going to make sure you understand who we are, what we do, and what we can offer, okay? So we want to start a little bit about history, just, just so we can kind of just get our brains around that. Um, it was first, the assistive technology was first passed in 1988, and it was called the Tech Act, or up here you see it's called Technology Related Assistance Act. And it's been reauthorized several times, and the purpose of this act is to promote people's awareness of and access to assistive technology. In other words, why I'm here tonight, okay? That's why I'm here tonight, to make sure you guys know about assistive technology in North Carolina. Um, it's also, the purpose of it is to provide funding to the state programs across the country. 
So, so we can be all on the, um, the same page. I want to talk a little bit about definition, okay? So the definition of assistive technology is any item, piece of equipment, whether you buy it out of a store or make it yourself, but it's used to increase, maintain, and improve life. That's the purpose of assistive technology, okay? Um, assistive technology, we look at it, is to help you to become independent. It's helped to make tasks easier. It's, it's also to save time. Now this fella right here, any, any men in the room football fans? And women. I apologize for that. I should say women. Yeah. Anybody football fans? Do anyone know who this guy may be? It might be a little, you might can't tell. This is O.J. Brigance. He was a linebacker for the Ravens some years ago, and he ended up with ALS. And this picture was actually taken um, at one of our exposition fairs, and I'm going to get to that a little later in the program. But he actually was our keynote speaker. And what you see in front of him is an augmentative communication device. So he unfortunately, because of the LLS, he is unable to speak like you and I, so he uses the communication device to do his entire presentation the day that he came to hang out with us in North Carolina. And I just kind of wanted to just mention that. And here you also see underneath the definition all the categories, some of them that I kind of mentioned earlier. By the way, what's upstairs? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. wait. Oh, wait, bro. I was thinking they're bowling. <laughs> just thought I asked. Just thought I asked. <laughs> Categories, so as I mentioned earlier, vision and hearing. So you see other ones, education, learning. So there's a, a range of, of different um, assistive technology categories, okay? So when we talk about AT services, we're talking about any service that directly assists the individual with the AT device, okay? Now, I'm going to stop here for a moment. Have you seen a cane like this before? This is called an easy step cane. Brought one tonight, and let me tell you what it does. If you have issues going up steps, it has the steps for you. So, let's pretend this is the bottom step. So, you're going to put your foot here, so now your foot is on this step. So let's pretend we're on the next step. So you're going to move it to the next step, put your foot here, and then you move your next, your foot to the next step. It has that step for you. Easy step came. That's what this is called. Does it work coming down? It does work coming down. That's the great question. Yes, ma'am. It works going up and down. My mom actually uses, <laughs> she's at my house right now. I said, Mom, I need to extend and this one I keep at my house. She left hers at her house. I said, Mom, I need this tonight. She said, I said, are you going back upstairs or are you going to stay down? She said, I'm going to go back up. I'll use her right quick. <laughs> so, but um, she doesn't, and the reason why I kind of threw that out there, she, she tends to not need it going down. She needs it going up. But yes, ma'am, you can use it either way. Either way. Good question. And the next thing I want to show you is called, or I want to say, is assistive technology. For most people, technology makes things easier. Remember, just making you more independent, making tasks easier. But for people with disabilities, technology makes things possible. And so let's just look at this for just a moment.
including me. And I apologize that the closed caption wasn't on. I just added that one today. And I may have to do the rest like that. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, North Carolina is technology centers. So the reason why I said I know I'm in the right place is because we do so much. And we have such a small group that does so much. Um, we are state and fairly funded. So we receive from both the state and, and the feds. We are under the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation Services and we are part of the Department of Health and Human Services, okay? And per the act, we are here to, in, to ensure that people are being served that have disabilities and their families. So for us, it does not matter your disability, it does not matter your age. We pretty much say from zero to 90 plus, it does not matter to us. Um, also, eligibility criteria, because that's usually a good question and people usually will ask that. We do not have a, a, a eligibility. You have a disability and you tell me you have a disability, I'm going to go with that and, and move on. I don't have to look at any doctor's notes or any doctor's orders that says you have X, Y, and Z. If you come to us because you're looking for X, Y, and Z, then we're going to try our best to, to assist you. Now, so let me break that down just a little bit for you. That means we are working with parents with children with special needs in the school system, so that's the environment. We're working with um, adults. We're working with older adult, um, adult children with their, their parents, older adults. And we're working with spouses, so it may be the wife or the husband, does not matter to us. And as I mentioned about the environment, school, work, recreation, group homes, nursing homes, we are wherever th there's a need. We are there. We serve, as you can see here, all 100 counties, and there's only about 21 of us. In Raleigh, there is, um, I'm the manager for the Raleigh and Sanford Center. There's four under me in Raleigh, and we only have one in Sanford. Charlotte is the other largest one. There's four of them in Charlotte, and then everybody else is about one. So there's really, truly not a lot, but we work very well together. I'm going to Wilmington tomorrow. Um, I'm going to Charlotte next week, and while I'm there, I'm going to pick up something that needs to go to Wilmington. So it's going to be in Raleigh, so he's going to come to Wilmington. So we work together. Someone can call and say, um, I have a consumer who just called and said they need X, Y, and Z. I don't have it. Do you have it? And if we do, we, try, we figure out how to get it to wherever it needs to go. Um, also, what I didn't mention in the bit when I was talking about the history, there's an assistive technology in every state of the United States. Did you guys know that? There's one in every state of the United States. Every state, including our territories, Puerto Rico, Guam, U.S. Virgin Islands, and, and a few more. So they're everywhere. There are times that someone in Virginia may call us and say, my parent lives in North Carolina and I'm coming down, but I would, like, I would like to bring them to do device demo, which I'm gonna talk about in a moment. And that's fine. Or someone may call and say, I live in Virginia, mama lives in North, in North Carolina, we're getting ready to move, is there one in Virginia? And we get them hooked up to the Virginia Assist Technology or the South Carolina Assist Technology, wherever they may be going. So we work very well with one another, within the state as well as outside the state. Any questions for me thus far? Good, I'm doing a good job then. <laughs> So let's talk about free services. So we have two different parts. We have free services. Remember, we receive federal and state funds, and that's where our federal funds say there are certain things we have to do. Then we have some fee-based services that I'm going to get to in a moment. So with our free services, and I'm also going to talk about these, um, <clears throat> these pictures I have here. With the free services, device demonstration is one of our services. Basically, it's just get a, a feel for the devices. Play around with the devices. Just kind of see how, how, how it feels to you. Is this something you think you might want to use at home? So you can come to us and we can, de we can demo the device for you or we can come to you and demo the device. We can come to your home. That is not a problem. Um, we'd like for you to come to the center because we have such a large center and you might come in for one thing and you look around and go, can I go over there? And you're like, yeah, sure, knock yourself out. And they go over there and see something and think, well, can I play with this as well? So we do have device demos where you can play around with these devices. The next one is device loans. Now that you've done played with the demos and we kind of showed you how they work, how, you, how, how it feels to you, now you can take it home with you. 
<clears throat> we have two, two different types of loans. We have the short-term loans, that's two weeks. Now, I usually give a caveat and say, a lot of times, it takes time for people to really get into figuring out how this works once they get at home. So once they finally get into it, two weeks is free, because I don't know about you guys, but time just flies now. It's like, you, it's, the day is Tuesday, before you know it, it's Friday. So it goes so fast, especially if you're busy doing other things, you want to really get to understand and know that device. So if you give us a call and there's no one waiting on it, you can keep it for another a couple more weeks. That is not a problem. Um, then we have what we call open-ended loans. Our open-ended loans are gently used devices that the manufacturer no longer um, uh, support. So they're not updating it, they're not doing anything. If you have any issues with it, they're not doing it. However, there's so many devices that become gently used that it's one of those, we don't want it to sit and just collect dust on the shelf. So if there's someone that can use it, we want them to use it. How many have um, uses iPhones? Okay, now how many do have uses Android phones? Okay, okay, perfect. Now, I'm gonna pick on iPhones because I happen to be an iPhone user. You know, I'm, I was an eight, two year, two Christmas ago, and at that time, I moved to the 11. What number are they on now? 16? 15? <laughs> it's ridiculous. And I, I'm an Apple girl. It's ridiculous. But that's what I mean by things become obsolete after so long. And that's just the way, it te unfortunately, technology can be sometimes. It just, they, they try to, what they do is, and I'm going to show you a, a spoon in a moment, where they made it, what built it one way, and then they realize, oh, I can make it better and better and better, just like with these phones. And so that's why they become outdated after so long. So we do have that. And you can keep these loans, the open-ended loans, a month. You can keep it un until. It does not matter to us. We can loan that out to you for however long you need it. Then we have what we call device reutilization. We have two here. We have what we call technology exchange posts. We're going to get to that in a moment. And we have something called reuse room. The reuse room is pretty much what it is. It's, it's a little room. And it's kind of like a, a general store. And it has devices all over it. And um, it's pretty much where people have donated these devices to us because they're no longer needing it. Um, we don't take everything because we don't have a large, a large space to take everything. So we kind of pick and choose what we can, can accept. Or if we see something is more um, popular and we're getting rid of that fast, then if we see more of that, we try to take in whatever that's really popular at the time. Um, so with that, all you have to do is just call us, ask us, do you have a, do you have a poor you live? Do you have a whatever? And if we do, you can, you can get that and for free. Reuse room, everything in that room is for free. So far, have y'all noticed I've said everything has been free? Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, just want to make sure you listen. <laughs> Public awareness. Public awareness is pretty much what I'm doing now. Just giving you general information, an overview of who we are and what we do, what our services are, okay? So these are our services as far as the free ones right here. Now, with that said, um, I wanna talk about a little bit about this picture. So last year, we decided, and it was the first time we started getting out, branching out more um, to do things, we decided to have what we call AT pop-ups. And this is called, this was our aging resource fair. Did anybody hear about that? Okay. It's our aging resource fair. We had it in, the top picture is in Morganton. So that was the first one. All three of them were in May. And the bottom picture was in here in Raleigh. And then the third one was um, in Greenville, North Carolina. And it was a fun day. We had tents. We were outside because, um, Last year, last May, we were still kind of wondering about, you know, now we're doing more of not wearing the mask. Um, but back then, we were still kind of worried about that. But they said, you know, being outside was pretty good. So we decided to do it outside. And what we decided to do is this is for anyone ages 55 and, and beyond. And anyone, and anyone could come and their caregivers. Anybody could come. But we were specifically for that age group. And so when you came, you could do one or two things. We had about 12 vendor tables outside with tents. And you could do one of two things. You could either get out your, your car and come in and kind of, you know, chit chat with the vendors, or you could just do it what we call a drive-by. 
and just stay in your car and we will walk to you. And we did have a few people to do that, to where we physically just came to the car and explained to them one by one, each vendor, what we had to offer them and, and how we could possibly assist them even then or in the future. It was a huge hit. We had goodie bags, we had some things in, I had some things for you guys tonight, and it was a lot of fun. So we decided we want to do that again this year, but it's not going to be aging resource fair. We're trying to change it, we want to do different categories because assistive technology encompasses a lot of things. So this year we're doing it in, it's, first it's called gaming. Um, don't be scared by that. Um, gaming and recreation. And so we are, part of that is what you're thinking. We're trying to get people with disabilities, younger kids with disabilities, to get more involved with gaming and that kind of thing. Whether it be physical gaming on the computer and or, uh, excuse me, gaming on the computer and or physical gaming. Uh, we want to get them involved. However, we also said recreational. So we are going to, we invited, I, I just got someone to confirm last week, um, adaptive gardening. And so she's going to be coming to our Sanford one. Um, that's going to be in May. And so she has so, if you think I have a few things, you should see all the things she can, she can show you how to be able to, to garden. If you like, how many like to garden? Great. But how to garden without over exerting yourself or getting too fatigued? I know. Getting too fatigued. So that's one, so those are the kind of things we want, because we want to bring in you guys as well. So we, we want to do something for our younger crowd, but we also want to do something for everybody, okay? But anyway, so that's why that was. In, um, in addition to our free services, we have what we call accessibility for all. This began during the COVID um, in 2020. We decided since we couldn't physically, we always do this, what I'm doing tonight. But at that point, of course, nobody was going out. So we decided to do a virtual event um, every Thursday at 1130. You can come on to our Zoom link, and it's called Accessibility for All. And basically, it's expertise, it's staff with expertise on different technology, teaching you and showing you how to utilize that particular device. So you can go to our page, our website, and I'll tell you what that is in a moment. You can go to our website, and you will see it there. You can go there if you are really interested in it, click on it, and it will tell you how to get into the Zoom link on Thursdays if you would like to, to join us. It's every Thursday, and then they kind of stop at a certain time for a little bit, and then they start back up. And during the um, holidays, I know they, they kind of stop for a little while. But it's every Thursday at 11.30 for 30 minutes. It's not long for 30 minutes. I make sure I say that part. So it doesn't take long to just learn something really quick. Okay, so that's something we're doing that's really cool. And then we also have, because you guys don't really know who we are, we also have something called NC Ramp. Believe it or not, excuse me. <clears throat> Am I talking too fast? Okay. Believe it or not, um, consumers from time to time will hear about us and will give us a call. I probably get whew, at least 10 calls a week ask, saying, I heard about you through Dr. So-and-so, and I have, in fact, this is a real one, I have a sister, I live in LaGrange, outside of Greenville, and my sister has to get to, she just got home from the hospital, she's got to get to a doctor's visit in about a week or two. And I heard that you guys have temporary ramps. And I go, we do. We do have temporary ramps that you can borrow for free. Now, this is the thing. Because North Carolina is pretty large, so there's only certain um, centers that has these, these ramps. So when they're being borrowed, sometimes we may not have one in. And as we remember earlier, I said, sometimes we have to go to another, another center to find out, do you have one that we can get? So I'm very pleased to say that we got the um, staff last week in Greenville to come and pick up a ramp from us to get it to the lady in LaGrange. And she had, in the very next day, she was going to her, doctor, to her doctor's visit. And she could not get out the home without this, this temporary portable ramp if it hadn't been for somebody knowing somebody to say, call a T to see if they have one that you can borrow. So that's something, that's another service that we do offer. Sometimes you have to wait, and we, we, and we, and we hate that because sometimes you, when you need it, you need it. You, and, and you hate to say that you have to wait. But if someone is, if we have them all out, sometimes it's hard because we have to try to get them back. And another purpose for the, the temporary ramps is to hope, and, hope that you're in the process of getting your permanent ramp 
placed in at, at your home. Okay? Any questions on that? Okay. You remember I said, I'll come back to the exchange post. Um, it used to be a website, and it was massive. It had every category you could think of. So let me tell you what it, what it was um, and, and how we're doing it now. It was where you, or and it is actually still, you can, let's say someone in Charlotte has a accessible van that they, don't, they no longer need and they're trying to sell it. Well, you could place this on our website and then someone in Burlington might see it and say, you know, we've been looking for an accessible van. So what we do, we're the middleman and we just make sure the Charlotte and Burlington people get contacted to each other. Because there are times that, because at the time, you would have to put in all this information, your, you know, your contact information, sometimes it's incorrect. And so they'll call us and say, well, I've, I've tried to call and couldn't get them. So we made sure that they got connected. Now, with that said, um, the devices and things that were on this website, some of it was the seller was truly trying to, to, to sell it. Um, a lot of times they were giving it away, there are a lot of times they were giving it away for free. And there are times they'll say, well, I don't want to give it away from free, but I'll take the best offer. Whatever they can give me is fine. Or they may say, if they'll just pay for the ship, the shipment, then they, they can have it. So that's how we try to get these devices. Because we, again, we do not, you heard me say this earlier, we do not want these devices sitting on a shelf and just collecting dust. What kinds of things you guys think might be um, on this, in this, this particular, on this list? Wow. Now I mentioned Royal Lift, yes sir. Uh, wheelchairs? Absolutely. Wheelchairs, can walkers. you think of it? Walkers. Walkers. Rollators. Rollators, yes ma'am. Yes, okay. yes. Hospital beds. There's all kinds of things on, on this list. Now, you notice I said we used to have a website. It crashed. I also said we're state and federally funded. So we don't have the funds right now for that, for the website. However, we still have the service. And what we're doing is... Um, Frank is, is one of my staff, Mr. Frank, and um, he, so when someone calls into him, he just pretty much types it in and he collects the lids now. So let's say, what's your name, sir? Uh, Mike. Let's say Mr. Mike call in and say he's looking for, ex, he's looking for computer related type devices. Then what Mr. Frank is going to do is either email it to him or mail it to him, however Mr. Mike would like for him to, to send it to him. So you'll still get the list, you just don't necessarily go to a website to get the list. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Yeah. I represent, we got to make sure that's up and running. We have one, but we, we need a newer one. So she's working on that first before we can do anything with another website. But yes, sir, we are. That was the law. The long answer, but yes, so we are looking into doing that. Any other questions in, in, in regards to our technology post? Yes, ma'am. About graphs, um, does the department have like, um, I mean, some of these graphs need to follow certain guidelines, you know, for inclines and safety, mm -hmm. and does, do you have a list of recommended contractors to do grants? I just noticed that a friend of ours um, in the neighborhood has a very sophisticated solidly built new ramp going up to the back door. And um, right. do you have a... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's another really good question. Once you get a contractor who knows what's important. So that's twofold of an answer. The first part is, and let me talk about the, um, the, the portable ramps. The portable ramps are, and I can't tell you the feet right this minute, maybe like 36, I can't remember exactly the feet. It's just, it's one of those real straight type ramps. It's nothing, nothing fancy. It's just enough to get you out of the house because it's portable and it's temporary. And they have to be lightweight enough for people to be able to move around. Also, right, right. Also, um, we don't, so let's say if you call, if Mike called to say he needs one for whomever, Mike will have to come and, and pick it up. Now, there are times that I can get, if so, if Mike says I have no way to get there, then I will 
try to figure out how to do it. Sometimes me and my husband is doing it together. And he does, and he'll tell me, he asks me, he says all the time, when are you guys gonna start paying me? Because <laughs> I will have him to come and help me to do that. But for the most part, we have to say, because Frank is actually in a wheelchair himself, so he's the one that's over it. So we know he cannot physically do it. So that's for the portable temporary ones. And to, then to answer that other part of your question, yes, ma'am, we have several places that you'll be able to go. Also, um, in regards to the portable ramps, we also have something on our website that talks about how to ha handle those portable ramp ramps and what the sizes of them are um, for, for your home. So yes, we have that. And if you want to get my uh, card and give me a call, I can get that information to you. Well, the day's coming. Okay, 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 <laughs> sounds good. Anything else about ramps? Okay. Actually, I do have a question on ramps, not not for portable, but permanent ones. Do y'all have guidelines for what's required in terms of slope and all that kind of stuff? They do. The reason why I use the word they, the pronoun they, oh. is because we work. Remember, I said earlier we work with we're on, we're with um, Division of Voca Vocational Rehabilitation Sys Service, DVRS. We have engineers with that agency who, when we, when Mike Collins and say we need a ramp, we get them to go out to, to look at that for us. Yes. They'll do that? They will, if, but VR is for employment. So they go out and do it that way. And if not, then we find a, a private entity that will go out and do it. 101 Mobility is, is one. In fact, 101 Mobility is one of the ones that um, is going out to um, a, a family's home in Apex to put one out for us. And, we, and what we do is, the only thing that we do is we take pictures so we can show them what it looks like. Then they, then they actually have to go out so they can do their measurements. Because every home is going to be different. Right. Every measurement is going to be different. Does that answer your question? It does, and I'd like to talk to you afterwards. I don't okay. want to type everybody's time because I need to get one built for my parents right now. Okay, okay, okay. I see two hands. I Just, sorry, responding specifically to Mike's question, like the, the general ADA rule for ramps is for every inch of incline, yeah. you need a foot out. Okay. So it's a one to 12 ratio. And that's what I was going to say. Make you sure your, your contractor knows what they're doing mm -hmm. because sometimes they make it too steep or out of materials that if it gets wet, they get slippery. Absolutely. Thank you both for that. Thank you both for that. Um, I'm going to move on to, unless there's another question, equipment distribution program. Have you heard of this, this program? Equipment distribution program. Um, it used to be called TEDP or EDP, and this particular program provides equipment to people with hearing and speech impairment to access the telephone. Now, this particular program isn't under us, but the reason why we bring it up is because the speech impairment piece, we have SOPs that will go out to do assessments to help you figure out which phone works best for you. And then we help you fill out the form for the EDP program itself. Now this program is under Division Services for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing, DSDHH, okay? And so they're the ones who actually would provide the funding for whatever communication device you may need. Um, we sometimes have stroke um, patients who are now unfortunately unable to communicate so they're now needing an augmentative, augmentative communication device. And so that's where our SLP would do an assessment to see what device would work for them. Um, they do have criteria. The criteria is um, you have to be at least six years of age. So that's pretty good. That's pretty young. That's pretty young. Um, you do have to be a, a resident of North Carolina. And there is a financial criteria. So, and, and I don't know that off the top of my head. And that's where we would have to speak with them on what that would look like, OK? Um, and here you see, you see at the bottom the amplified phone, but at the top, do you know what that is called? Anybody? It's called a pocket talker. Did somebody say yeah? Pocket a pocket talker. And so you, it, it helps reduce background noises. So you put this on, and this is your speaker piece. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass this around so while I'm talking, I want you to see if you really can tell a difference. Um, it's really, really good listening to television. It's really, really good in meetings like these, at the church. So it's really good for those kinds of, of times. Also, there it comes with two foot of cord, extension cord, so if you need to extend this piece, you can, okay? So I'm gonna pass this around. And I'm going to turn it on. 
you know it's on with the red light. And the left side controls the bass and the triple, okay? So just kind of play with it a little bit if you like. Visiting family members in the nursing home can be very handy. Very handy. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> And we're gonna keep going while that's passing around. So you remember I talked a lot about a lot about free services. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about fee-based services. Now the fee-based services has nothing to do with the federal people. They don't they we don't have to report to them in regards to what we're doing in regards to the fee-based services. We do report to them, however, everything we're doing with those free services. So I'm the one who collects all that data and makes sure that we're doing all the things that we should be doing, along with pictures like these, as well as stories showing them what we've been doing with consumers in North Carolina through assistive technology program. So with the fee-based services, we you see here we have um, assessments and form assessments and training and technical assistance. And um, basically the assessments just are comprehensive written report with recommendations. A lot of times you will find school system are usually ask us to do a, a comprehensive report. Uh, Medicaid med will, will, will ask us as well because they want to make sure it's medically necessary. Okay, so that's why we're doing these assessments. Um, farm assessments, same concept, and we'll also not only help it working with the farmers, but we're also working with, and you know, as I said this earlier, we not only just work with the person with the disability, we work with the entire family. So that could be the farmer and his wife or vice versa. Okay, so we're working with everybody. And with the farm assessment, um, we partner with a and T University, they have a, a funding program. So when we're doing assessment, we work with them. So any devices that's needed, they get they pay for the devices for them. Okay, if they're eligible. We also I think it's too loud. Yeah. Or, or, or keep one part away from the other part. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We also do consultations and trainings. So, give you a good example. Um, a new device has come about, and the school system has called us and asked us to come in and do a training on that specific device for an hour or so to their special needs teachers, to regular ed teachers, to PTs, SLPs, OTs, to whomever may need it that may come in that day. We'll do um, some, some training on that. A consultation, the same thing. Um, it may be in the school system, it may be one-on-one -on -one with a consumer. They purchased the device, now we're going to just kind of, for the next month or so, just keep an eye on how that's working out to make sure this is working out for them or make sure to see if they need additional training. We've already done some training to see if they need additional training on what have you. Now, if you do, if, in regards to assessments, um, you can make a referral to our intake coordinator and anyone can do that. And um, you see this long email, this long website? This is our website. This is what I tell you. Yeah. It used to be nsatp.org. And somebody above my pay grade said, I think it needs to be longer. <laughs> <laughs> so it's longer. Um, but when people call in and ask um, about um, a referral, what I tell them is just Google DHHS. Once that website pops up, you'll see assistance at the top. That's one. That's in fact, that's the first word you'll see is assistance. When you click on that, we're about the sixth or seventh um, agency from the bottom. Okay, NCATP. All righty. So, uh, and you can also call Monique if you have questions about anything in regards to uh, making a referral. Smart homes. How many are beginning to place things in their homes to make it as smart as possible? I see one hand, two hands. Okay. Anybody in the back? Okay. Okay. I'm, I am in the right room. Okay. Um, this is a game changer, people. A game changer. Um, what can I tell you about it? So. So, does, so the ones that raise their hands, do anybody do the Google Nest or the Alexa? Okay, I have a couple of people. Do you guys like it? 
Yes, I, sometimes a little scary that she seems to always be there. Always be there. Very, very, very handy. <laughs> I, I agree. You raise your hands agreeing? Okay, okay. And you do, you do have some people are like, I don't know, I think she's watching me. So I don't, I don't see. <laughs> yeah, that's what they say. Um, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't tend to have a problem with it. I keep my camera off, because there's a way to turn the camera, and, you, and you'll know it's off because it turns orange. You just slide it, and it turns, turns orange. Um, so I do do that. Um, let me start with the smart um, thermostat. I have been thinking it, and my um, son in November had called me. He said, I'm thinking about getting you guys smart thermostats. And I went, I've been thinking about that. Oh my God, yes, please. So I love it. Made me a little, uh, it has made me a little lazy. I could be literally in the den, and it's probably five feet from me, and I'll just go on my phone and I'm cold, and I'll just turn it up. I love that. But the true reason for it is when you're away from home. We have had some really cold days, although the day's been beautiful. And I know I like to keep mine on a certain level. And so when I'm on my way home, I can now change it. Or if I'm gone for a whole week, I may have it kind of low and then I turn it back up so it'll be warm when I come in. I love that. That's just amazing to me. Um, the Alexa, I, I do like it. I just in conversation. I, you know, my mom and I were watching something. He, she said, well, how old is Brad Pitt? And I said, I don't know. Alexa, how old is Brad Pitt? <laughs> <laughs> so I like that. I, so half the time I talk, we put her right into the conversation. Um, the, you see the, the smart plugs. So with the smart plugs, you can plug in like lamps. Let's, if, if you see the light bulb, that's a smart light bulb. They can be expensive. But once you get them, I understand that they last a long time. And I think we are on about four years now. And so I'm gonna see how many years, more years we can get out of them. But the smart bulb is really good. I want to mention that first. But let's say you don't have smart, bu smart bulbs or don't wanna purchase smart bulbs, then you can purchase the smart plugs and plug things into that, such as your coffee maker, <clears throat> such as your, um, your lamps. I have lamps plugged into mine, so I just tell them, turn on, um, dining room lamp and it turns it right on. It's really good for those kinds of things. Um, how many's heard of a talking microwave? <laughs> Nobody? <laughs> okay, so let me tell you about two. So you see the two microwaves beside the um, coffee pot. First of all, that is a talking coffee pot. Now these, they the one I'm getting ready to show you in a, in a video, is, um, it can be part of Alexa. You can talk to it through Alexa, but the way I'm going to show it to you is just truly a talking microwave. Now here, the one up top, is, it, it goes, you can talk with it through Alexa and tell it to do certain things. Also, if you see those little orange, they call tactile um, stickies. So that's for low vision. So someone who's having a hard time seeing the buttons, um, you can now put, you can put tactile stickies on there so you can see it better. So for the start button, it may be a triangle, you can see the triangle for the start button. For the X is the stop button. I don't know if you can see it from here, but there's a little um, water, dr water drop. You know, how, you know how you see water drops, mm -hmm. droplets, a water droplet for the defrost. So you can, you can decide on how you want to put your tactiles on the, on the microwave. Trying to think if I missed it. And of course, you know, everybody, everybody has cameras now, camera doors and just all of those things now. Um, but, the, but also, and, and I have a few things, if you're not truly not into Alexa, and that's fine, but I just got my parents one. In fact, I got them this one because this particular Alexa for the two that say they have them, do you guys have the 15? I don't, I don't have the 15. The, this one, you'll know, this one, literally turns when you talk so if this is the alexa and i go hey alexa she oh, does like oh. this <laughs> she literally turns my mom is still my mom be 76 in um this is coming saturday she's still trying to get used to it my daddy loves it but she's kind of like i don't know and like with alexa you have to tell her sometimes you'll ask for something then you kind of want to go back to your picture you go alexa go home 
And my mom says, my mom says, I don't want to tell her to go home. I'm like, yeah, just tell her to go home and she'll go home. <laughs> so it really just is up to you if, if that's something you think you can get into. But there's other ways that we can still do things to get you where you can do things without having to do any of these smart things up here. So let's look at so, this. Like, yes. You can also rename Alexa. You sure can. You sure oh, can. Wow. You sure can. And I think, I'm going to tell you where I think that came from because some people, some girls' names are that. And so they had to come up with a, re a way to change it so they're not calling, if they're calling the girl, then Alexa knows it's not her. I just happen to not have anybody that with that name so I can keep it that. But I have a, a good friend. Her niece is named Alexa, so they can't, I, I can't remember what they call their girl Alexa, but it's not that. I don't know how many of you knew Alexa Schumann when she lived in our neighborhood, but I just said her name in the room, and Alexa started playing the music of Robert Schumann. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she'll do that too, because if you might, and just in talking, you, even with your husband, you might just say something about Alexa, and then you'll say something else, and before you know it, she's playing a song. So that's, that comes back to where you're saying is, she's forever listening. She's always listening. So yeah. Okay. We're going to play this, and this does have a um, caption to it. This is the talking microwave. Now, this microwave is literally in my office, okay? And pretty much everything that I'm going to show you today, whether it's video or what have you, is in my office because I can't wait to get to the lift chair. And it's in my office. So, again, I'm going to remind you guys often while I'm standing up here come to my office. We have so many fun things that you can play with just to see if you like it. Okay, so this is the talking microwave, and this is one of my staff explaining what it does. So this is the talking microwave of a magnetic ship. So this is not like a normal microwave. As you can see, there's no display to show the time. Um, there's no digital clock showing how much time is left. This clock rather talks to you. So for instance, down in the left corner, you see a button that says clock, one slash 24 hours. So I'm going to mash it and you can hear it the time. Clock, 2, 0, 6, And then another cool feature about this is it tells you how much time is left. It tells you when you start cooking something. So I'm going to set a timer. So first of all, say you want to cook something. You mash the bottom button like any other microwave and it opens. Then you can press and shut. And then say you want to cook something for one minute. You can hold down this button here. It says cook minutes and hours. So I'm going to set it for one minute. You're going to hold this button now. Cook time zero minutes 15 eight seconds set cook time. And it says set cook time. Then you mash up. And it says one minute. So then I'm going to mash start. Power level high, one minute, zero second. Isn't that cool? So when you mash start, you can hear where the power level is, where the cook time was. And then it's going to end its microwave your food. And then, so say you want to stop it to check on your food, you just simply mash this button that says stop. So then when you stop it, it tells you that it's been recorded and how many minutes you have left. So if you want to check on your food, you're simply going to go and check on your food, shut it, and say that it's not done, you want to start it back. You want to start for the remaining, think it's at 44 seconds remaining. Thank you. 
mind is ready. It's nothing to Alexa that was truly a talking microwave had nothing to do with Alexa there are some that you can adapt to Alexa and that one you probably can too but that one was that was definitely just for talking um, and it's, it's good for low vision um, I have had a client in Wayne County due to diabetes she has lost I think the left eye completely and can see a little in the right eye and after doing an assessment I talked to her, showed her, kind of on just on just Google it, showing her what this looks like. Cause she couldn't. I had come to her. I went to her in Wayne County. She couldn't come to me, and she she thought that would be a be helpful. So we were able to purchase it through a funding source, and I called her maybe two months later, and she said, "Oh my God, it has just really saved her life because she would have to wait for her son to." Um, get off from work to do some things for him in regards to cooking and there's some other things I'm gonna show you too that I actually have to whip as well that she doesn't have to wait for her son to do but the microwave the talking microwave was one of them because she just cannot see a regular microwave to do what she needs to do um, so where can you buy some of these items um, you notice I kept saying all our services are free but I think sometimes people think that you can also purchase from us no, you can't purchase anything from us. We'll let you borrow it, but you don't buy anything from us, okay? Um, but what we can do is just tell you places that you can go. And we don't, we don't look at one place over another. We just say these are, the, these are the options. And if it's the same, if it's four different vendors with the same item, for the most part, we're looking at the item. So you can, and, and what I tell people is just go with the cheapest, whatever the cheapest is. A lot of times that's Amazon. A lot of times that is Amazon. Um, so where you can buy, have y'all heard of some of these websites, uh, Maxi A's, Elder Store, the, does they ring, do, do they ring a bell? No. Okay. Maxi A's and the Elder Store um, is a website online, a reputable website, website online, and they have devices such as for vision, for hearing, for mobility, household things. Um, a lot of things we, we, I have on this table came from Maxi A's. Um, bathing aids, toilet and knees, LS and S. LS and S stands for learning sight and sound made easier. That's what that stands for. And obviously it's for vision and hearing. Okay, that's another website. I have this particular information here. I have it in a flyer. So if anybody would like to take one, you're more than welcome. So you have the resources. Um, International Essential Tremor Foundation. They don't, you don't purchase anything from them, but they are such a great resource um, in dealing with the disease of, of if anybody has Parkinson or may, and has tremors or any, and anything of that sort. Now, although that you don't purchase anything from them, they is a, they're a good resource to, sh to tell you where else you can go if you go to their website, okay? So that's why I like putting them up there. Let me ask you about this one. How about Magna Ready? Have you heard of that one before? That was right here in North Carolina. Nobody? Magna Ready is an adaptive closing um, for clothes. So it's um, hidden magnetic closures. So let's say you have buttons. Um, it's magnetic. So all you do is just put it over instead of having a button and it, voila, it, it closed for you. Um, an NC coach, NC State coach, um, apparently came down with Parkinson some years ago and could not button. And his wife, out of Raleigh, North Carolina, and his wife um, took her a little while, but she came up with this idea of if he can't button, how about we do magnetic and see how that works? And it became a big, a big deal. And she and it is now a website, and she's making and it's, it's a good, it's a great business. So it's really good for someone with those fine motor skills that just cannot um, cannot tackle those buttons. 
Also, don't forget when you say where can you buy these items, don't forget you can still borrow, borrow them from us and think about local churches and that kind of thing. Sometimes they have those kinds of assistive technology as well. Also, I want to mention, I don't have it up here, but funding source. You may say, well, how do you purchase some of these things? How do you go about um, buying them? With funding, private insurance, Medicaid, Medicare, they have a fee list a fee list, a schedule list. And so if it's not up there, they're, you can't get it through your insurance. Um, if it's not, and if they consider it not medically necessary, you're not gonna be able to get it through your insurance. Um, there'll be some things you'll be able to get through there, like, you know, everybody knows, you know, your wheelchairs, those, those kinds of larger items, you can get through your insurance. So what we do is we don't have any funds to say here, go buy what you need. But what we try to do is know what resources are out there that will assist you in purchasing some of your devices. Um, we just had um, a funding ourselves called Access, and um, and it was through the um, aging department, and they had funneled some of the money down to us so we can do assessments. Or once we did assessments, saw what the, the need was then we could use the money. And um, it was quite a bit of money, and we are just about out. I think March is gonna be our last, because we only knew we were only gonna have it for a few years. Um, so that's getting ready to go away, and I, and I hate that, but, and, and, it's, and it's helped a lot of seniors across, because it was for anyone 55 and, and up. Um, so I hate that that's going away. But other resources are your Easter Seal UCP, they have a, a smart technology funding resource. Did anybody know that, Easter Seal? You can go through them. Now, they don't do hearing aids or iPads, but they will do, let me name some of the things that they will do. They will do things like um, keyless entries, whole house controls, power door openers, vision aids, wheelchair modifications, so patient lifts. So there are things that they will do. And they get their funds, I wanna say in June, or June or July, and then once they're out, they have to wait. They'll put you on the list and then they'll, they'll make sure you're the first one whenever they get that new pot of money. Um, there is an eligibility um, criteria with them. Um, age related is not, you don't, it does not matter your age. Um, their only criteria is this has to be your last resort, that you have no funds from nowhere else to purchase whatever it is you need. Um, I've, I've had to use it a few times for consumers because they just didn't have any other resources to get what they need. Um, also, another alternative finance program is Self-Help Credit Union. You've heard of Self-Help Credit Union? They actually have a program where, that you, can, where you can borrow money to purchase the, the, the little items and large items. Um, sometimes it may be a, a, a sensible van. And we have had a few people to do that. Um, and or it may be, because hearing aids are crazy high. They are so expensive. And so we have had a few to had to the need to have to go through them to do that. Now, their interest is extremely low. Um, well, it was before the Fed started putting it up, because I, I don't think they changed it much. But even when across the board when it was low, they were at 2%. So they really, really trying to make sure, yeah. So they're really trying to make sure you get what you need and not have to spend crazy money to, to, to receive it. Um, and so even though the Fed has in, increased our the interest rate on 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 the, the, the on, the, on us, um, I still don't think they've moved, if they've moved, they've only moved a tiny bit. I don't think it's bad. Um, we have probably because we help people we, or we let people know about it. That's, that, that then they say if they want to do it or not. I think last year because we do have to report that to the federal post. I um, think we had about 21 people across the state that did utilize this program. And um, I think a couple of them was needing to buy an accessible van. Okay, so they wouldn't have known about it otherwise if we hadn't mentioned it, mentioned it to them. So remember, as we're looking at our devices tonight, um, look locally at your, um, at your local stores. Walmart is a good place to look, believe it or not. Look at new ways to, to make things. Um, it don't have to necessarily be brought new. Remember, the definition is as long as it's to improve your life. It doesn't matter whether you bought it from the store or you made it yourself. Be creative, ask questions, and don't give up. Whatever you do, don't give up. 
And the last thing I want to say, then we're going to start either we're going to look at, we'll look at a few more videos and I'm going to play with a few things. Um, just give me maybe 10 more minutes. We have a sister technology expo fair that we do every year, October, the, this year's October the 5th. Um, this fair, prior to 2020, we did it in 2018 and 2019 at the McKinney Center. We're going to do it this year at the McKinney Center. And it's basically, we have about, and I'm over this particular event, we have about, I invite about 50 vendors, vision, hearing, computer access, you name, we've had vans, I don't think it's in this picture. We've had, at the McKinney Center, we're able to bring vans, accessible vans into the building. We had two vans in 2018 in the building. And so you get to go around to each table just to kind of see what's out there, what's new, what might would work for you. And we also have services out there too. Um, Heart of Hearing Services is out there, just talking about their service and what, what they can do. The library, of, North Carolina Library for the Blind typically comes. So it's a really good resource just to come out. It's free to the public. So just to come out anytime throughout the day, we try to make sure there's coffee and little snacks so you can have a little something on your tummy if you want to come early in the morning um, before it gets too busy. So we're, go we're going back in this year um, to the McKinney Center, so we're very happy about that. The last three years we did it virtual, and of course we all know why. Um, and I'm pleased to say doing it virtual, um, we had anywhere from 375 to 400 people virtually, and 17 states was a part of this virtual um, affair this last year. Um, just all low, across the country, people were coming to it. So we decided, although we're going to be virtual, we're going to be physically together in the center at the McKenna Center. We're going to also stream it live. So if anybody wants to do it on Zoom, they, they're more than welcome to do that as well. Anybody have any questions in regards to that? Anybody? Yes. Um, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these devices connect to the internet. And I didn't hear you mention the access program. Yeah, uh, the access program uh, is a federal <coughs> subsidy for uh, anyone to get internet for less than twenty dollars a month. And you, to to qualify, you have to be receiving some sort of government service. Mm -hmm. uh, I was able to get uh, Spectrum. Uh, I just tell them that I was getting uh, uh, Social Security. Uh, and I was, I, at the time, I had AT&T, and I was going to tell them I was willing to jump to Spectrum, uh, and, you know, if they, they'd give me on the, the access book. So I got uh, 36 megabits per second uh, for less than 20 bucks a month, and that's more than enough for you for multiple Absolutely. people watching YouTube or, or, or Netflix. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't need more than that. And, um, uh, AT and T, I understand. Uh, now, if you, if I had been a, a Spectrum a customer and asked to get on the access program, they would, you know, they would have given me all sorts of runaround. I never would have gotten anywhere. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, so being, you know, so but if you're jumping from one service provider to the other, they're, they're you know, they'll bend over backwards to help mm -hmm. you make the move. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. There, there are a few out there, and I just don't have time to talk about them all. That's the only reason I'm trying my best to get to some of these, some of these devices. But you can call me if you feel if you have any questions or concerns about anything you heard tonight. Because sometimes you have to let this stuff digest and just say, you know, she talked about X, Y, and Z. Don't hesitate to call me. Um, and we could talk a little longer about some things. Or if you're looking at something that you're, you're trying to get or you see something up here that you, you wouldn't mind, we can work on trying to find the resources for that, okay? Has anybody had, um, anybody know anything about the power lift recliner? Okay, does anybody have one? We got one for my sister-in-law. Do you, she loves it? He loves it? Yeah, she needs it. She needs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my parents just recently, I got one for my parents just recently, and it's, it's again, it's a game changer. So, I, but I saw right many hands who, you've, not, you've never seen the commercial for the power lift recliner? So let's, let's look at this one. And let me say this before I even, now this is a, this is a particular company. Um, they can run anywhere from 300 to 3,000. Um, the average is about 450, 460, Amazon. It's just as easy to get it from Amazon or Walmart, okay? 
So let's look at this. After a morning of gardening, someone and her neighbor Joan need to relax. Someone likes to relax in her old recliner. Joan knows her favorite, and Fendi Power Recliner offers the most comfort. Oh no, Sunny's recliner doesn't give her the support she needs. Power Lumbar and a full-width power headrest let Joan customize her comfort needs. Sunny needs to charge her tablet, but the outlet is far away. Joan charges her tablet with the narrow speed port on her hand control. The footrest extension lets Joan stretch out. Cindy's recliner doesn't have that benefit. Luckily, Joan introduces Cindy to Mabel Lift. The Infinity Recliner has true infinite forward positioning to meet your comfort needs. A lithium backup battery ensures the chair lifts you safely when the power goes out. Thanks to Joan, Cindy is ready to enjoy countless comfortable position combinations on her new Viva Lift. The Infinity Collection by Viva Lift Power Recliners. It really is the most comfortable recliner in the world. What you guys think about that? This looks complicated. <laughs> you're in trouble. What do you say? <laughs> well, repeat that. What do you say? If you need one, you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah. yeah my response was number one, if, if you can still work out in the garden, you really don't need one of those, but you don't like it. The yeah. other thing, I'm surprised, one of the most important things to my sister in law is that how much it helps you get up. It helps they you get up. Yeah. Stand to sit, they sit to stand. I know that, but I would never be surprised if it didn't emphasize that mm -hmm. more as a real benefit. Mm -hmm. One of her problems is just getting out of the, she has one lung and many other problems. Yeah. yeah, so the remote control, you push it one particular way and it will literally come and meet you. And then you, you, you kind of put your tush and feel it and you just kind of sit and then you push it the opposite way and it will so it will just calm, go down slowly. Mm -hmm. Sit to stand, stand to sit. It's wonderful for people who truly need it. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, is there any uh, financial assistance for people who need one of a stair lift? Um, a stair lift. Yeah, a stair, you know, uh, one of those chairs that'll ride up, uh, up, the, up the upstairs. Is there any assistance for anyone? Um, Easter Seals helped us with one recently. Um, can you hear me okay? Easter Seals, UCP, Karen Frawler, she helped us with one in Winston-Salem recently. Um, and as I stated, we, had, we just had some access money. It's different from the access he, the gentleman was speaking about. Um, where we were able to get a couple of, of them for some consumers as well. Is anyone you know needs one now? Not immediately. Okay. Um, call us because well, it's constantly we're finding resources to, to assist with those kinds of things. So, so call us. We got someone. Um, and one-on-one -on -one mobility is the one that's helped us with the stair lifts as well as the ramps for outside. So we do have reputable people to, to vendors to help us with that. Uh, because I don't have a lot of time, I'm trying to decide on what I really want to show you. The um, have you heard of the app C and A? The C and AI. AI stands for um, artificial intelligence. Heard of it before? Yeah. Okay. Um, again, this is somebody that um, vision impairment and cannot see. Let's say it's money. You can't see the money? Give me a minute. And you may hear it say something about text. Short text. Mm -hmm. It will read text. It will read a document. It will read people. I'm going to show you that in a moment. Currency. Five dollars. One dollar. It's seeing my money. Five dollars, one dollar. Yep. So again, That's someone me. who truly can't, can't make it out clearly, it will do that for you. Um, how much is it, and where do you get it? This is a good question. This is an app, and you and it's free. That all you have to do is download it. Now, this C and A I app app is for iPhones, but there are for Android for Android phones. There's called it's called Envision A I or Google Lookout. Okay, you got that? Do I need to repeat it again? Those are the apps. For the phones. Now, let's say you can't, you, you're trying to make out. Remember my lady with the diabetes in Goldsboro in Wayne County? Um, she couldn't see her cans. So after we were able to get what she needed, then we were able to put it on her app and now she can. Product, 
processing. Del Monte diced tomato zesty chili style. This is a free app. There's a lot of free apps. And you can also go, it says for more information, with large letters, it, it'll give you the it'll give you everything that's on this can. Everything on this can. Now the Del last Monte diced tomato zesty chili style. Del <laughs> I don't want to get out of that though. Okay, so the last thing, and I already asked this young lady if she would do it for me. Now, it recognized people. It would tell me if, if it's a person in front of me. Um, and usually, it, it, to please, thank you for that. It will also tell me expression, facial expression. And the reason why I asked her is because she, was, she looked to be the youngest in the room. And it will also tell you about what age they, they, it thinks it, the person is. So now, my mom did it for me today. My mom will be 76 this coming Saturday. It's told me, it said she'll be 55. Oh. <laughs> she is 55. And I looked at it and I said, mm-hmm. And a couple of days ago, it said she was, um, 51. So I was like, I don't know about this. Thing. So I want to do you. So just, just look right in front of me. Put one face near center, six feet away. Processing. 21 year old woman with brown hair wearing glasses looking happy. Looking happy. <laughs> this, um. Zero faces. The other thing I like about this, it will show you. It also to show you colors, it, color, it per gray. perceived colors. And the reason why I use that word is because it white might not, it might not get white it quite right. Um, so, so for example, hush. For example, it might, um, if it's black, it might say gray. So I, I've noticed that's kind of off. But it also will tell you when you accept the agreement, it will tell you that sometimes it can be off. That they're working on it all the time to try to make it better and better. Okay, but Mine this is really, really good gray. for someone who, you know, you just can't see things like you used to, or, or someone who's totally blind. Now it, it will tell you who the person is in front of you. There's also something called an or, OrCam My Eye Pro. Now this is free. That particular device that I just spoke of, the OrCam, it's like $4,000. And it's a little camera that sits on the glasses. Either you can put it on your glasses or and it comes with glasses. And it not only will tell you who's in front of you, but uh, Jan, I, I could go to Jan and hit the, hit the picture and I can actually say this is Jan. And the next time I see Jan and do like this, it'll say Jan is in front of you. Oh. So there's, there's a lot of new technology for, for the blind or for the vision impairment. Did I see some hands? I think I saw yours first, ma'am. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you again to say what is the app? Um, okay, see it, S-E-E-I-N-G, see it, A-I, and that stands for artificial intelligence. That's for iPhones. For Androids, it would be Envision A-I, or Google Look Lookout, or Look Up, Look Out, Google Lookout. Um, Do you have that written down in the papers up there? I can write it for you. This is a liftware level spoon. You've seen someone with tremors and trying to eat. You have to hear, I heard it beat. I'm now going down. And I'm trying to eat. And usually it only have nothing to follow, but I have a lot of raw beans in the, on, this, on this spoon. Again, if somebody I said, some of this may not be for you, but you might know somebody. You might so, know somebody. So that reduces the tremor if you have a tremor in your hand? It's not necessarily reducing your tremor. It's a computerized piece in the, in the, the this piece here is computerized and what it is sensors. And so it's what it's doing is activating. When it feels you going a certain way, it goes the opposite. And the part that bends is this gray part and this is the part that's letting the spoon know don't go that way. So that's why that's why I can do like this, and it, and you notice it beats, and it keeps the spoon level. That's why it's called a lift wear level. A lift wear level. Lift wear level. Level. And where can you buy that? You can several places. You can go to that particular store, lift wear level. That is a store on website, or you can go to Amazon. 
always go to Amazon. Um, someone was asking me about this. What does it look like to you guys? Anybody? Oh, I love it. I love that. <laughs> I, I have no idea. I asked you that before the meeting got started. I'm clueless. It's a lift. It's a liquid level. So, when you're pouring some anything into a cup, a mug, a pot, as I'm putting water in it, it should as it gets to the rim, it's going to start buzzing and vibrating. So you know to stop. <laughs> it may be the battery. I had not checked, and that's why I don't like to do camera. I had not checked. I checked everything but this. It may be the battery, but that's what happens. It, it vibrates for you, so you know to, to stop. Sorry about that. Um, see um, lamp switch. You know how sometimes when you're turning your lamps with your fingers? Yeah. This is a lamp switch extender. I actually have one in my office at home and it's just so easy. You barely touch it and it'll turn it on for you or turn it off for you. Yeah, you, yeah, you can still do the clap on, clap off, absolutely. And then the last thing I'm gonna show you is how many loses keys or wallets or phones? Keys, now this I know it's gonna work because I have the batteries for these. This is um, a key finder or key tracker. So it comes with a tr one transmitter, it comes with a holder, and then it comes with six um, little rings. And I'm trying to see if I can show, oh, right here. It comes with these. And I'm gonna show you what that sounds like. Come out, here we go. This is number one. It also comes with the little key ring, and it comes with little stickers that you can place on the back if you want to stick it to the back of a remote. That's what I have at home. Um, I have this one on, um, on my USB drive so I don't lose it. And it's number two. And so if I can't find it, I do this. And it goes off, okay? So key finder, 20 Five bucks, depends on how many you want. This is six in this box. It also comes with all the batteries. So just all you do is put it together. Uh, uh, what was the name of the spoon thing? Somebody needs to know. Lift, one. wear, level. L I F T? Yes, ma'am. W E A L? W A R E, wear. See, and that's another reason why I don't like cameras, because I'm so southern. Level? Level. <laughs> oh, I'm so southern. Hey, I'm so southern. southern. And you're right. If nothing could be finer, nothing could be finer. <laughs> what, what, what is that? You have, okay. What, you have a question? Yeah. Okay, so what kind of range? Like if you lose your keys and they're not in the house, they're maybe out in the car or someplace oh. else. Yes, ma'am. So, <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, you have a smartphone? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm hoping I can get you on this one since I couldn't get you on Alexa. You can do one or two things. You can do air tags, that's, that's an Apple product, or you can do towel, T-I-L-E, towels. Now the towels, and I have one on my wallet, my pocketbook is over there. The cool thing is it tells me if it's near me or not already when I look on my phone. So, but if I couldn't find it, I would hit it. And you should hear it. Mm -hmm. Y'all hear that? It's kind of low. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's letting me know. It's saying signal strength very strong. Walk around to get a stronger signal. <laughs> so you can do that. Um, again, that's the towels. T I L E. Or have you have you thought about those? I've been thinking about it, but I didn't know like if I left, if I left it out in the car, or, you know, or if I left it. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I'm glad you said that. So, for example, my luggage, I have one in my luggage at home. It's giving me the address where my luggage is. Um, my wallet, I was waiting to see if it was going to give me. My wallet is telling me it's off of Hillsborough Street. <laughs> I'm telling you, right, right. Is that really on the street or is it somewhere in the building? 
So it matter of fact, but it's also said Alexander Family YMCA. So I know to go in that area somewhere where I must have left it at the YMCA. I'm telling you guys, this is another game changer. If you got it, if you can't remember. So what you heard when I did that one, the uh, let me show it to you. The uh, the air tags. No, excuse me, the towels. This one goes into the wallet. This one, it's very flat. Goes into the wallet. This is what you just heard ringing. Okay. Then they have they're, they're similar to these, but maybe half the size that you can put on your key ring, okay? So, that, and, and then you can do a kit, and I think that one came with a kit. It was like one of these for the wallet, and then a couple of for your, your rings, your um, your keys, that kind of thing. That's the towel. And this is the towel. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm, that's the towel. And where do we let, me, let me put my money back on. <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> and well, you can look at Walmart, too. You can look at Walmart, too. Now, in addition to, with the exception of the, the towels and the air tags, everything else, although I said Amazon, you can go to Maxie's. But what I encourage you to do is look at both because 9 to 10, the reason why I tease and say Amazon is because it's going to be cheaper. It's just going to be cheaper. You get it from Amazon. Um, is there anything, anybody else? Because I, I told you 10 minutes and it's 825. I'm going to talk um, I'm going to just like to know about that oh, you did metal thing sticking up. What's that? This is a pot um, stand, pot holder. So, and I forgot to bring the pot. I do have a, a video. So, you would clamp this onto your stove, place the pot here, the handle goes here, and now the pot's not going to move anywhere. Now, what I get from people, the question is, can you put it on a gas stove? I have a gas stove, and I would recommend it. I would, but you can't do it on an electric stove. Electric stove all day long wouldn't have a problem with it. Okay, so and, that's what it is. And what's the purpose? The purpose is somebody with, um, in fact, the video shows you an amputee where he's, um, both his hands are gone. Uh -huh. And so he's wanting to cook. And he needs that because he doesn't have both his hands. Right. Um, something else is um, a pot, this is a pot holder. We have a pot stirrer. Um, and the pot stirrer is really neat because it, you clamp it onto your pot and it stares whatever you have in that pot for as long as you need it in that as long as you need to be staring. I think it goes up to 13 hours. Again, I have videos. Yeah. yeah. I have videos, but um, it's getting late. Can y'all think of anything else you might want to ask me? Um, oh, I'm glad you said that. What you got uh, besides a microphone stand, what else you think this might be? I like that. That's real close. A gripper. Gripping what though? Something hard. And this can be moved up more, or it can be it can be extended or 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 down. Um, it is a um, hair dryer holder. You put a hair dryer. So you know how the hair dryer is like this, yeah. and you put the hair dryer, and it's going to hold the, the arm part. It holds the arm part while the blowing part is out this way. So someone again who just can't do both, trying to do both at the same time and really needs that, uh, that little extra hair push, this is a hair dryer holder. Walmart, 15, 20 dollars. It truly don't cost a lot. Um, what I do have for you guys that you're more than welcome to have, um, what you think this may be? Not the ones that I just told. <laughs> I already forgot. Oh. <laughs> a toothpaste pusher, yeah. It pushes the rest of that toothpaste out. If you want one, you're more than welcome to have it. And then what you think this may be. This is really look. No idea. It's a camera screen. Anybody on the on the computers? I think you probably are. You guys have computers at home? You put this over your camera. I have a camera right here. You put this over. It hides the camera. So you know how sometimes you never know if somebody's looking. Like 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 um, Amazon Alexa. You never know if somebody's looking. You can keep that hidden until you're ready to be seen on Zoom or whatever it is you might be chit chit chatting with. 
So this is like, and you're more than welcome to these. These are the kind of um, things, the marketing things we try to buy to give out because it also have our information on because I don't want you guys to forget. Let me ask you this, as I, and, you, and I'm gonna be here for a few minutes if you wanna come up. Um, did you learn anything tonight? Yeah. Yeah.